year five, folks, year five. Yeah. So we're up. We're up. the room that did not think that tell I see like did not think that was gonna happen yep. even though I told you it would but uh, so we're in Memphis yesterday great crowd and we were in uh, we were in Benville the day before and Terry introduced me and, and he, he just kind of said hey I didn't I didn't introduce you as a new coach this time well yesterday just big as Dallas your new head football coach <laughs> <laughs> so we were always talking about at what point would I not become the new head coach I just become the one that took five years and, and two and two uh, caravans. So, really, so uh, hey, it's uh, it's easy to see why things are going well when you when you look from the top down. I mean, we've got great people in charge of our programs from, from Chuck through Kelly and, and Terry, and we got great coaches. I, I enjoy this time of year uh, because we get a chance to actually talk and visit with some of the other coaches. And we're so busy at what we're doing most of the year, we, we just kind of see each other in passing. And you get a chance to sit on a plane or, or ride in a car and just visit. And, kind of bounce ideas, you just realize really just how fortunate we are to have great people in charge of the other sports. And I think we all support each other really well, but we do it from afar most of the time. So we get a chance to build relationships, it's pretty cool. And I really enjoyed this. And it's our last stop, we say best for last. This is always a great environment. And uh, hopefully everybody stays upright. I know y'all were here a couple years ago, we had we had a guy go down and scare us all to death. So everybody stay upright, nobody, nobody pass out on me over the next couple minutes. And, I'll try to give you some insight as to what we're doing. I brought a couple guys with me that I wanted to introduce to you that do a great job. One of them, y'all probably all know, Dave Roberson right here is the director of player personnel. Uh, Dave's been with me the entire time. Uh, we were together at Southern Miss years ago. And when I got the job, we brought him in. You know, player personnel, I mean, does a lot of tasks that nobody else really wants to do. He deals with parking tickets and housing and meal plans and, and all of our recruiting weekends. I mean, there's a lot of things that go into it. Uh, he's he's the guy that deals with all these guys that want to come into home games. And I mean, it's just a never ending list of things, but uh, his job is extremely valuable. And I give him a hard time a lot. I mean, he knows if I'm having a good day, if I'm picking on him, but I'm telling you the truth, nobody does the job better than he does. And we're proud to have him. Uh, I also want to probably one of our newest members to our staff, Scott, if you would step forward. Scotty Conley is the Director of Football Operations, but honestly his title is really General Manager. Uh, Scotty and I worked together at Trinity Valley and Howard Payne early in our career. Uh, I, would, I would urge you to go on our website at some point and just look at Scotty's profile and where he's been. Uh, the experience level he brings to our staff is unbelievable. He's coached at, uh, at some of the best places on the planet, college football, and so he's brought you know, he does all the, the football operations things that you normally, all the logistics, all the things that you normally would do. But just the expertise that he brings to the table has been phenomenal. You can talk to, to Dave, Dave just, the, just the conversations that you can have. We're not going to hold it against him that he spent a short period of time on the west side of the state. Y'all just skip past that spot in his career. Just skip that spot move on to the next one. But, uh, again, just tremendous uh, asset that he brings to the table. And, uh, and we've had a lot of changes off the field, to be honest with you. This guy's been one of the best ones. My best recruiter is in the house today. She's already been introduced earlier, but I'd like her to stand. Miss A State, Miss Corey Keller, is also an A State rep. And is our A, she is our A team uh, in terms of, of giving tours and, and closing out. When they come into my office after she's given a tour, they always say yes, so please. <laughs> My office, all I want to hear is yes, I'm in. That's all I want to hear. And I prepare. And when she gives a tour, we're batting a thousand. So we're doing good. <laughs> Guys, really excited to be where we're at. Uh, this is a, I mean, this has been a, a long, hard road. Uh, Terry kind of alluded to what we've been through over the, over the last few years. Uh, we were having this discussion on, in the car on the way down today. And when you take a head coaching job, you really don't know what you're getting into. I mean, you, you can see how people have done in the past. And, you obviously know there's a high expectation. When I met with Chuck and I met with Terry, it was obvious to me in that room. They wanted what I wanted. We want to be the best team in the country in a group of five. And they've done everything that they said they would do to help me do that. There's not been one thing that they promised that has not happened. Now, it's taken, it's taken time to do that, but it's never slowed down. Watching that facility being built right now, nothing makes you more excited. I mean, we just, we've never stayed still. 
So we knew we were all on the same page. I just don't think any of us knew exactly what it was going to take to get there. And so you get the job and you start rolling day one and you realize, man, I am the fifth head coach in five years and about half the guys that they recruited aren't here anymore. This place has just been attrition, attrition, attrition. Guys have left and, and gone. And so we had to make a decision, folks, and what we decided was we didn't want to we didn't want to start losing for the sake of rebuilding. We wanted to rebuild and reload at the same time. And I just want to tell you guys thank you because y'all have not given up on us. Over the course of the last few years, there's been ups and downs, but we've, we've won two titles and tried to rebuild at the same time. And so what you saw last year was 42 new guys thrown into a football team, probably physically our most talented football team, but also our least experienced team and so at times you saw a really, really good football team, and at times you saw a really, really bad football team. And we were pulling our hair out. I mean, it was, it was whatever we could do to get all these new bodies all moving in the same direction. Well, you know, that process has helped us because I think we've got our best football team going forward this fall. Every one of you asked, how are we going to be? How are we gonna, guys are going to be really good. The expectation is to be the best team in our league. The expectation is to be the best in the country at our level. That is what we expect. And I think the lumps we took a year ago and the way we built our team over the last couple of years has prepared us to really go out and feel the best football team that we've had. And that's why I get excited. I think we had a phenomenal spring. Uh, and, and I kind of judge it this way. Number one, we hit each other a lot. I mean, we hit more this spring than we have in any previous spring. We put toe-to-toe, -to -toe, helmet on, strap it up, we're going to tackle to the ground. A lot of people don't do that at all. We did it six times out of 15 practices. Here's the great thing. We got good work done and we got out of it healthy. Nobody needed surgery, didn't get anybody hurt. Everybody's gonna be healthy and ready to go when fall camp starts and that's big. You read all over the country, lost starting wide out to a surgery, lost starting linebacker. We didn't have any of those headlines. We don't want those headlines. And so we were able to get good solid work, but stay healthy. And guys, we got better. We got better in the course of that time. We still got competition going on at several spots, which is what we needed. Two, three years ago, we had no competition. We had one guy, that guy was going to play. Now we got battles going on at right guard and left guard, at right tackle, at all the wideout spots, at corner. We got guys that have to fight to keep their job because we've stayed for five years and we've, keep, we've keep, uh, kept putting good recruiting class on top of a good recruiting class on top of a good recruiting class. That's the process. That's how it works. And so we're going to see the benefits of that going into this season. Um, and we got a schedule. Uh, that it's going to be exciting. We get to open up at home. I don't know. You know the statistics. That doesn't happen a lot. But not only are we opening up home, but we're going to be opening up in front of a brand new, bowled in, waterfalls, slip and slides, all kinds of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, catfish. 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 <laughs> Costa Rica. There you go. Whatever. We're going to be bobbing for apples down there in the corner. I don't know. I mean, just think about the excitement. You know, I've been at programs that hadn't renovated or changed a thing. Not a brick has changed for, for 10 or 15 years. And I've been there for five and we haven't stopped building. And, and we just continue to uh, tr truly build a place that you can be proud of. So, I mean, that, that CMO game, we expect all you guys to load up, bring people with you, and really enjoy breaking ground and showing what we are capable of. Uh, and it'll continue, we'll be hopefully be in that new facility. Next spring, we'll be moving in ourselves. And it'll be huge. A lot of you guys have already bought lockers. Uh, we, we got, you know, we got locations in there that got naming rights. People have stepped up. It, it's been it's been a lot of fun. And we traveled to Alabama week two. Uh, you know, hey, if we're gonna pick on one, let's pick on the best. Yeah, and, uh, let's see what we can get done. And then we've got two group of five teams two weeks in a row that I think are really big for us. Obviously, playing across group of five lines against good programs with Tulsa not being that bad, big of a trip. That's one a lot of people can make. And then you and coming to us. Gives us a chance to start off with a ton of momentum. And we struggled there in the past. I think a lot of it is because we've been so inexperienced, so many new pieces early in the year. These guys have not been ready for those kind of games. This is the season we get, we get over the hump. And I think what we've done to get to this point allows us to have that chance. Conference play is going to be good from top to bottom. You all know that. And uh, we're going to hopefully have you know, record crowds to go along with the record season. That's, that's the standard. So. Um, you know, some, some guys that you're going to see that, uh, that you've not seen, I think you'll be excited offensively. Armand Weiwei got a six-year of eligibility. And if y'all remember, he went through an ACL and he went through an ankle sprain. He missed two years of ball. And he had maybe the best spring of anybody on our offense. That's 226 uh, 26 pounds of a running back 
we haven't had. One of our biggest issues has been able to be able to run the ball in situations where everybody, y'all knew I was running it, I knew I was running it, the defense knew we were running it. Those times come in a game, and we haven't had that power back. And he's brought that aspect to our, our team, had a phenomenal spring. Uh, you're going to see a guy named Dahu Green uh, factor in at wideout, transfer wideout that was not eligible a year ago. I mean, he's going to take what's already, what I think, the best receiving core in the country. He's going to even elevate that. He and Bubba Agbabar both stepped in and really helped us this spring. we got an all-purpose uh, player in Kirk Merritt who is going to kind of be, here's the best way, he's going to be J.D. McKissick, but 10 pounds heavier and maybe a step faster. All right, so dynamics that he can bring. Those are some new guys that you're going to see that y'all have not seen that you'll be excited to watch, not to mention a senior quarterback, Warren Wands back. You got uh, Justin McKinnis. Uh, you got Omar Base. All those same guys you're used to seeing, plus some new ones that are been added to the mix. Defensively, uh, that D line is still going to be the best in the country, and it's going to be headed off with a guy named Ron Heen Bingham. If you didn't pay attention to him at the end of the year last year, he is our best defensive player right now. He's also our hardest worker. When your best player is your hardest worker, everybody around you gets better. And uh, he's been wearing number 23. He doesn't know this. He's now going to be wearing number eight. I don't give out single digits to D linemen unless they're special, and he is. So you want to watch. Look for number eight. Uh, Kevin Thurman moves in at the three technique where uh, D, uh, D liner uh, transferred and graduated out and now is in camp. He is a transfer as well. You didn't see him a year ago. He was, he was waiting eligibility. He's going to help us as well. Tajay Chambers is back a middle linebacker after knee surgery and ankle injury, and he's, uh, he's looking better than ever. And we got another year for Brandon Biner. That's a name you haven't heard in a while. He missed two years with injuries. Those guys to go with that group that was already there. Uh, B.J. Edmonds had a great spring. Justin Clifton, I mean, just collectively one of the best football players and best young men I've ever coached. Uh, I think right now he is, some publications say he's the best defense player in the league. I mean, that's just a great uh, group of guys to start the season off with. So, and, and I hope we don't have to punt, but we got maybe the best punter in the country. <laughs> in so, uh, we have a lot of things to be excited about. And, uh, you know, right now it's just a matter of letting those guys get, they're getting about three weeks off uh, to rest and relax. Twelve of those guys that play for me are going uh, Monday leaving for Barcelona on the study abroad program. I think we got 23, 23, 23 athletes going total. Again, it's the only program of its kind in the country. People ask me all the time, well, why should kids come to your place? Well, they win championships, they all graduate, they all get to go study abroad. We got great facilities, and if they don't go to the NFL, Terry finds them a job. Why wouldn't you come? <laughs> <laughs> it's that simple. It's that simple. So it's uh, and he even guarantees it when they're sitting there, he'll say, Mom and Dad, if he doesn't go to the NFL, I promise you, I will find him a job. My work's done at that point. Corey gave him a great tour, and he promised him a job. I mean, we're good to go. <laughs> Pretty good deal. So, Again, a lot to be excited about, and uh, hopefully you guys will come be a part of it. And before I leave the stage, I just say any questions that you got. I know we're the next ones up. We're the next season around the corner. I know you all you guys are chomping at the bit. Any questions that you got that I can answer for you, I'd be happy to. What you got? DJ Edmonds kind of moved off the field on the spring game. Is he okay? He is. He is. Uh, and actually came back and played some more in the spring game. Uh, I thought he had a really, really good spring. You know, the issues that BJ had a year ago were just out of the inexperience. If you think about, you know, Cody and Money Hunter had played virtually every snap. Uh, he had only played, I think, uh, I mean, a single digit number of snaps defensively. And it showed at times last year, he did a phenomenal job this spring. He's healthy and played at a really high level. Anybody else? Any other questions? Offensive line. Offensive line. You know, everybody is back on the old line with the exception of J.P. Filbert. He's in camp with Kansas City Chiefs. And so J.P. was the left tackle a year ago. Uh, what we did is we took Leonard Bonner and slid him back over to left tackle, which is where he was before. Uh, Jacob Steele is still your center. And then what's happening at those other three spots is competition every day. And on any given day, it was a different group. Now, if you remember Dalton Ford and Troy Elliott were our starting guards last year, both those guys are really probably better suited at other spots. But that's what we had, and they did a great job. But they're both about 285 to 90. This spring, you had Marvis Brown, Andre Harris, and uh, Big Adnip, and Big Clint Harvey. All of those guys are 330 plus. 
So we have really upgraded in terms of size and power at those two guard spots, and that allows us to really, yeah, yeah, no doubt. It just, it just, it looks like you got a Volkswagen parked in both B gaps. Is what it looks like. <laughs> is what we want, all right? So really, the biggest challenge is going to be what happens at right tackle. Does Troy Elliott become the starting right tackle? Does Nordine Sednali, if y'all remember his name? He had uh, shoulder surgery a year ago. Does he become the right tackle? Does Dalton Ford become the right tackle? There's a lot of competition, but we have really gotten bigger, uh, you know, just in every aspect, power, strength, size, and it's going to look different, but they're, they're also all back with the exception of one, so there's some experience there too. Um, I, I'm expecting that team, you know, that group to really be upgraded from a year ago. Good question. What else you got? You got some good trick plays up your sleeve this year? I do. I do. Uh, I do. You uh, you have to be there in person to see. Them. <laughs> we have a deal with the new ESPN. They're gonna. They're, all trick plays are gonna be deleted from the footage. You have to show up in person to see. Them. Uh, and if you don't need enough money, I'll let you call one. <laughs> what else have I got? You mentioned that we have a pretty good quarterback as well. He's not bad. He's not bad. <laughs> Yeah, I think Justice has really prepared himself well. Uh, we're not we're we're in, in, in great shape in the sense that not only is our starting quarterback really good, his backup could start for most people, and will end up being a, a really good starter for us in Logan Bonner. But uh, I think the thing that, that really speaks a lot about Justice is um, you know he went through 15 practices really hard on himself in terms of how he you know just in terms of taking care of the ball a year ago. Felt like that he turned the ball over too much, and we did have too many turnovers, but all those were not his fault. Uh, I think he was way harder on himself than he should have been, but in 15 practice, he had one interception. And, uh, you know, I thought he just made great decisions. He's a really laid back guy if you've been around him. He's not that guy that really wants to step out and talk a whole lot, but he also understands his role as a quarterback. He's got to be a leader. And I thought the biggest strides he made this spring is how he, how he carried himself. It truly became his team, his offense. And I thought between him and Justin McKinnis and Warren Wan and Leonard Bonner, those four guys really kind of took control of that offense. And you had uh, Bingham and uh, B.J. Edmonds and Justice, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Clifton, Jay Clifton, Jay Clifton. I thought those guys did the same thing on the defense. And uh, it's probably the biggest thing I thought that Justin did over the, over the Justice did over the uh, spring was really prepare himself as a leader. He'll be one of the best quarterbacks in the country. Uh, he's going to have a very real possibility uh, of being a draftable prospect when the year's over with. We just need to keep him healthy, but uh, he, he'll be a better player than you saw a year ago, and I thought he was pretty good a year ago. Anybody else? Anything else? Yes, sir. Any rule changes that are going to You know, there are. You know, we're going to have a fair catch on the kickoff return uh, that has been in, 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 uh, implemented. We don't. We haven't really had a lot of discussion about it yet, but basically what happens is if the ball is kicked and fair caught anywhere from the 25 uh, all the way through the back of the end zone, the ball automatically comes out as a touchback. So in previous years, you had to, uh, anywhere you fair caught a ball on an opening kick, you would take the ball in possession where you caught it. They're just trying to uh, reduce some of the collisions and I think uh, you'll give you the benefit of the doubt. If you want to fair catch it, just take the ball on the 25, you can. Uh, they're eliminating a lot of the cut blocks out in space. Uh, beyond that, really, the rest of the game is going to look pretty much like you're used to. Don't really know even how much that one rule is going to change kickoffs. I don't, you know, I don't know what exactly is going to happen with that. Yes, sir. We're going to beat Bama. No, we're going to beat Bama. We're going to beat SEMO. <laughs> we're going to beat SEMO. We got one team on the, on the schedule, and that's SEMO, uh, opening up at home. Uh, by show of hands, who's going to be there? Okay. By show of hands, who's going to bring somebody with them? Good. See, we ought to sell the sucker out in no time. Uh, we'll worry about Bama when we get to Bama, but SEMO is my only concern. And, you know, I think there's a lot of work that can still be done. We turn the keys to them uh, in the summer, and they work hard. We expect them to pick up where we left off, and when we get them back in August, we expect to look like they had a great summer. And then we need to have a physical fall camp. Uh, we open camp on August 2nd. Every practice is about, uh, open to you. We'll have two good solid Saturday scrimmages uh, that you guys are welcome to come see. And uh, it'll be September 2nd, and, and before you know it, I mean, we'll be put, playing ball in no time. And uh, But, I, again, I think you can tell we're all excited about what, what team we have to put on the field. Anybody else before I get out of the way? Appreciate y'all coming.